Hi, I'm Phil Constantine, and on this Travels with Phil, we're going to the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., one of the many Smithsonian institutions. And to start it off, well, let's go one of the first things you see, the spirit of St. Louis. Travels with Phil continues from the Air and Space Museum. I'm not the only thing here from San Diego. This is the spirit of St. Louis. Lindbergh used this to do the first solo crossing of the Atlantic. And this was manufactured by Ryan in San Diego. A genuine San Diego artifact. And there you go. Pause it if you want to read all the details. Started right at where the uh, post office is in that general area out there off of uh, Midway over by the Marine Corps Recruit Depot. And here's an interesting juxtaposition. The Lunar Lander right next to the Spirit of St. Louis. This is in the main lobby. Yeah, I like it. First off the ground, first on the moon. Very nice. They do change things around from time to time. They used to have the Apollo 11 command module here in this spot. You can touch a piece of the moon, by the way. They actually have a sliver there that you can see. Here's the video. All right. Travelsville continues with a real, very, very tiny sliver of one of the rocks from the moon. They actually have it set up here where you can touch it. And glass over it or plastic, but this is a slice of it right there, the black spot. Live from the moon. <laughs> and there's a picture of it, a little bit more detail. All right, let's look at some more on the Apollo 11 module. Travels with Phil continues at the Air and Space Museum. You can see it on the sign here, Apollo 11, Command Module Columbia. This is the one that uh, took them to and brought them back. Real thing, folks. This thing has been up around the moon. No, it did not land on the moon. It's been around the moon. And no, I didn't work on this one. I was uh, 16 years old when this one took off. Give me an idea, this is a mock-up of the Hubble Observatory. So this is actually relatively small. Now, it's roomy compared to uh, Gemini and uh, Mercury. But this is the real Apollo 11 for the first moon landing. Again, this one didn't land on the moon, but it's the one that took them there and brought them home. Wally Shiro once told me that he liked the uh, Gemini a little bit better. He says it's more like driving a sports car course for a multiple day trip. That might not be so comfy. These are some of the uh, examples of the command uh, uh, controls. Uh, this is the actual hatch from uh, the Apollo 11. And you see all the intricacies that are involved in just uh, opening a hatch here. And this uh, had a lot to do with after the Apollo uh, uh, 7 or Apollo 1 uh, problem and all the details involved in this. And then again, looking around at some of the other spots out here, this is the vest that Gene Krantz wore. You saw the movie Apollo 13, you might know something about that. And then Skylab, let's go to the video I shot of parts of the Skylab mock-up. All right, Travels with Phil continues here from the Air and Space Museum. You're looking at a mock-up of the Skylab, which I did work on. There were four Skylab missions, even though the uh, Patches say only three. The first mission was actually number one. The first one with people was number two. But uh, this uh, is a mock-up because the original Skylab burned up when it re-entered uh, the Earth uh, atmosphere after they ran out of money to keep it up in uh, space. And pretty much uh, everything just fell apart as far as funding was concerned. But this is a mock-up of Skylab. Now just next to it is the Apollo 11. That's the real thing. This is a mock-up. Uh, at this point, yes, I was running uh, the computers there uh, downstairs from Mission Control at NASA. That was cool stuff. The work I was doing wasn't so cool, but being a part of the program was pretty cool. And I helped run those computers. All right, they have lots of old, old. This is the actual uh, Kitty, uh, the uh, Wright Brothers Kitty Hawk Flyer right there at the museum. So they have lots of old stuff all the way up to modern day kinds of things. Another uh, angle on the uh, Wright Flyer. And uh, the tri-motor, you see it in some old Indiana Jones kind of movies. Uh, these things were very popular for a while. Uh, they had three motors on them. They had what looked like corrugated tin uh, uh, sides of the airplane. A lot of the old DC-3 kinds of uh, airplanes out there. This one uh, went over the uh, 
polar ice cap might have actually got over the North Pole. I can't remember. Polar star, it says. And uh, so there are just tons and tons of airplanes here. Now, this is not the only one, by the way. I'll tell you more later. This is Glamorous Glynis. This is the first airplane to go faster than the speed of sound. Uh, the right stuff. You saw that movie, uh, Glamorous Glynis. Uh, Chuck Yeager flew this one, look, uh, designed to look like a bullet, by the way, thinking that would make it more aerodynamic. But uh, they have another major uh, spot out uh, toward uh, Dulles Airport uh, where they keep all the even uh, bigger airplanes and lots and lots more of them out there. So you can see lots of stuff here in D.C. and then you go to the other spot and it's just amazing out there. Now this is uh, one of the old uh, X-15 type airplanes that are out there. You can see it here from a couple of different angles. Uh, more of a rocket plane than a regular airplane, but still an amazing uh, piece of uh, engineering. And then uh, other uh, aircraft in here, they do have some uh, warplanes in the various spots out here. Uh, you can see the X-15 over the uh, command module there for one of the flights. This is the Gossamer Condor. This is the uh, first lighter-than-air human-powered aircraft. Uh, literally, uh, at one point, I think this one actually did the English Channel. Uh, so it's one of the very first ones that was lighter-than-air that was human-powered completely. And then uh, this is the Voyager that made the first uh, around-the-world flight on one tank of gas, although it was a big tank of gas and they did a lot of uh, pumping. But uh, interesting aircraft. Uh, the other Jaeger, uh, and uh, Bert Rutan were flying in this. And then moving around to some of the other spots out here, don't have uh, time to show you everything that's inside. Wiley Post pressure suit, he's the one that flew Will Rogers, uh, unfortunately when it crashed, but this is how they got uh, learned how to do all the kinds of things that were necessary to fly in the uh, reaches of outer space. Some of the experimental aircraft here uh, from NASA's, uh, what was what called a dinosaur program. This is a V-2 rocket that was used by the Germans in World War II. This is the Apollo Soyuz, uh, combination here where they could test out of putting Americans and the Russians together. This is the Mercury capsules here and then a Gemini capsule. The, the title just doesn't quite fit into the picture. And uh, this is the uh, Gemini, the one that uh, Wallace Shira said he thought it was, felt like a sports car. And you actually see live shots of the moon there when I was there. And so it's just a really interesting place. Very big, some interesting artwork on the outside. Again, this is the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. on the mall. And uh, you, there's lots to see. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up by clicking on the button below. You're welcome to leave comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And finally, if you'd like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button over on the bottom right hand corner. Thank you again for watching.